So if we look about what does this custom resource means, what essentially um, our operator comes with is a new definition uh, for a new type called MongoDB, for a new kind of MongoDB. That allows Kubernetes with, with together with operator deploy, deploy MongoDB clusters. It has a very specific object model, an API, uh, that the operator comes with, and uh, we'll kind of talk about more into details of how it all works uh, during this webinar. So I want to do a quick, quick demo um, around how this all works. So um, I have here in my demo environment, um, I use uh, Azure Kubernetes service to give me a, a Kubernetes cluster with three nodes. So it's a very simple standard environment, just a couple of clicks in Azure and I can deploy my Kubernetes cluster. It will work as well in <clears throat> OpenShift, uh, Docker for desktop or any other Kubernetes distribution, as long as it's kind of taken from upstream. So a couple of notes. Uh, one is that here I have my CRD, which is the definition of this custom resource for MongoDB. So I can apply this resource to Kubernetes and Kubernetes will be aware of this type of resources. So um, the next thing we need to do is deploy MongoDB operator. <coughs> so this definition will also provide on our GitHub. And it would basically, it simply does, it provides new deployment of for MongoDB uh, enterprise operator, and it comes with our own image that we release. And once it's deployed in the single um, replica, with the, as a single instance, it will start look, monitoring all the new resources that have been applied to Kubernetes type MongoDB. That's simply what it does. So I already went and, and I've, apply the MongoDB operator because I'm not planning to go over installation procedures. We have very extensive documentation on our site and it's actually very straightforward. Uh, but just to quickly show you my system, I have my MongoDB enterprise operator running and my namespace is MongoDB um, at the moment. And um, I can now try and deploy uh, MongoDB to my Kubernetes cluster. So for this to happen, I need to have three elements uh, to, to, be, to have in place. Uh, one is I need a config map, and we go extensively about that in our documentation. This config map uh, will provide us a connection um, to Ops Manager, as well as additional information about how do we map out this particular database that we want to launch to Ops Manager organization namespaces. And in a moment, I'll show you how Ops Manager works and what it does. It's actually quite simple. So if I go and apply uh, this config map to um, my Kubernetes cluster, uh, I can use this config map in my definition of my MongoDB. So here's my YAML file for a very simple um, replica set. So uh, members with three members, version 4.0.10. <coughs> and I would say use project, which is my ops manager connection met method, is config map ops manager demo, and my credentials, which is my username and password to connect to ops manager. So I need to give user API keys to operators so they can talk to ops manager API. And also what I can do, I can specify, let's say, memory and my persistent true. So what will happen, operator is actually quite smart and does lots of things for you. Uh, so if I apply this resource, it will go off and will ask to generate a bunch of replica sets. It will go and if persistent is enabled, we'll go and, re and request, uh, we'll do uh, request persistent volume claims, generate pods uh, and get Kubernetes to mount them to my replica sets. So I already have my secret applied. So let me have a look. So um, credentials. So I have my uh, secrets already applied to Kubernetes. It has my username and password. It's very um, important, important secret information. So what I can do is do kubectl apply minus f. 
and uh, replica set TLS. And that will create custom resource and will instruct operator to create MongoDB um, inside Kubernetes. One point I'd like to um, bring up here as well is that I specified in this file uh, security, TLS enabled. And if we do that, Kubernetes, our, our operator is actually smart enough to recognize that and say, okay, I need to get certificates for TLS communication between client and MongoDB. So it's actually operator will have a functionality to go and use Kubernetes CA to request those certificates. Uh, wait, for, uh, create signing request, generate those certificates and distribute them into right locations within MongoDB Ops Manager and then add them to secrets. So if I go actually look at Kubernetes, at this stage, I should be able to see a number of um, signing requests pending my approval. So there's a bunch of them pending my approval uh, because operator actually created them. Um, so this stage, what I can do is I need to approve them. So it's a standard Kubernetes CA commands and um, this will approve signing requests and then our operator will detect that, pick it up and we'll start deploying uh, this new replica set that is specified, actually start issuing requests to create several sets and um, communicating with Ops Manager to get uh, this replica brought up. So hopefully my demo gods are working for me. So, um, That's happening. happening. So uh, while it's doing some things, because um, it's probably need to wait for a signing request to get approved, um, I'll have a quick overview of our Ops Manager. So here I have Mon MongoDB Ops Manager that is hosted and the protocol cloud manager. So this is essentially Ops Manager hosted for you. So you can go um, create account, there is a trial, um, period and play around with uh, Kubernetes operator quite easily. And that's what I do here. I uh, went on and created a Cloud Manager account, which gives me access to hosted Ops Manager, so I don't have to worry about deploying it myself. So um, Cloud Manager allows us to manage MongoDB databases. So if I'll say, I'll uh, look at one, which we'll use later in the demo, it gives us quite a bit of information about what about the MongoDB cluster. It gives us some monitoring information, allows us to really make changes, configuration changes to MongoDB. Uh, it can also can do continuous backups for MongoDB and a lots of kind of a lot of rich operational features, um, which is quite nice. Uh, it's a very par powerful tool, and if you have a look at it before, I would kind of highly recommend to look into it and see if you can, how it will help you to manage uh, MongoDBs. So at this stage, um, I would expect something to happen. All right, so you will see that um, we have a new replica sets demo one, zero, one, and two, and there's one last container creating event happening. So one note, uh, replica sets could take a bit of time to create. Uh, it really depends on your Kubernetes infrastructure. Um, so sometimes this could take a minute, sometimes it could take 10, 15 minutes. It really depends how fast your Kubernetes is. Um, so one thing to highlight here, because our configuration map has a project name and organization ID, I would expect to find this replica set that we're creating inside Cloud Manager uh, under the project name uh, demo project A. So if I go here, here we go, I'll find this project here. I think it still continues to do configuration uh, because it needs to hook up certificates and kind of finalize that setup and install. Uh, but if we look, we have a bunch of servers, which are our replica sets. Uh, each server runs our small little agent that monitors MongoDB, does um, live probe for Kubernetes. It does configuration of MongoDBs and does kind of lots of smart little things as well as provides monitoring stats to Ops Manager and can do backups. So it's a, a kind of very smart little uh, program that we run in, beside uh, MongoDB. It also allows us to see the status of our and health of our replica sets. So if agents are working on the green state, it means that uh, they detect that there is no issues and our MongoDBs are working. So that's a very good way of detecting uh, that everything is correct. 
and working. All right, so we see now we have how monitoring start detect a bit of the traffic, so there is connections. Most likely that's our agents generate, generate connections as the, as the monitor MongoDB, and there is some stats and we can start to consume a bit of resources. Okay, so uh, this is the demo. Uh, we'll go a little bit more into, um, and I have another demo scheduled in a few minutes later, and we'll go a bit more details about how can we do a bit more fine-tuned configuration for production systems. So here's the kind of high-level architecture of uh, MongoDB inside Kubernetes. Uh, we have, so everything is constrained within the same namespace. We use stateful sets uh, for MongoDB pods because we have a bit more control of how they, their life cycle. So if, they, uh, if we need to do a rolling upgrade, we can make sure that the replication between MongoDB replica sets are happening and that we can control that order of execution. Each pod connects to persistent volume claim and we can have up to three different volumes, uh, one for log, one for data, and one for journal uh, to be backed by uh, persistent volumes. We can use local volumes as well. And then everything, all that is controlled by operator and ops manager. So uh, quickly about Ops Manager, I already talked about it. It's uh, essentially what makes it MongoDB easy and fast to use. Um, we can deploy, monitor, upgrade, do backup, scale, and all that good stuff with Ops Manager, regardless of whether it's uh, your bare metal deployment, virtualization deployment, or Kubernetes. It gives us uh, quite a bit of monitoring specific to MongoDB. So we can look at op counters, we can look at op log, analyze how our MongoDB performs, we can look at the queries, uh, and it's quite powerful monitoring analytical system. Uh, it also can do as automation, we can modify which versions of MongoDB they're running, or some parameters like, best example would be why target cache, for example. Uh, we can use Apps Manager to set those values in your clusters. So it will automatically apply it across the entire cluster, instead of you going into and modifying for a chart. So it's a very powerful tool. It can also do backup. So continuous backup with point in time restore, restores, continuous um, or incremental. Uh, we can also have a function of querying those backups as if you would query a normal that database. So it's a very, very powerful feature. Um, it does pretty much almost real-time backup with just a few minutes, seconds delay. Uh, and it's an awesome, awesome feature uh, of Ops Manager. And Cloud Manager, I already talked about it. It's um, Ops Manager that we host for you. It's, pretty, it's the same software and uh, we just run it. Uh, there is less functionality there because obviously our operation team manages a lot of things that admins of Ops Manager have to do. So lots of admin administration functions of Ops Manager taken away from you because we take care of that. So um, this is one thing I would recommend you to start if you'd like to play around with our operator. So uh, where can we get our operator? Um, we have our GitHub repository, mongodb slash mongodb enterprise Kubernetes. Uh, that's one thing that and it has, it contains CRD and the example for MongoDB operator, how to launch it, plus additional examples of how to start different types of replica sets. We also, all our Im images, official images are kept at Quay, at MongoDB slash enterprise operator. And uh, obviously we are has to be on operator hub.io. And uh, for people who use OpenShift, we also in OpenShift repository, the, I think, access.redhat.com. Um, so our enterprise operator, that is using RHEL 7 image, which is what you're supposed to use for OpenShift, is actually is an OpenShift repository. So you'll find the different image there. Our Quay image has the Ubuntu based image uh, at the moment. And uh, now I'd like to show a bit more demo and that's a bit more interesting, I suppose, how it all works. So uh, for that demo, we have a simple app, right? So we could say it's uh, initial stages for a microservice app where we have our ingress controller, which I use Nginx at the moment. Uh, it has Let's Encrypt in front of it uh, for HTTPS connections. And then it basically rewrites URLs uh, once requests come in. So we have a static server, which serves um, our AngularJS web front end. Uh, and then we have two services, one API filters and one API products. 
and each of them could be backed by MongoDB. So obviously we're probably going to expect much way more services uh, depending on what microservice architecture means for you. Uh, we did come across, uh, kind of preparing for this webinar, I, we did come, uh, talk to different customers of what is the smallest microservice is. And that goes from just one function to quite a heavy product. So at the moment, I'm, I'm trying to be very simple in this demo just to kind of demonstrate the concept, but not necessarily um, say how microservice architecture should look like. Um, I'm, so I'm mostly focusing on connection of service to MongoDB rather than the overall picture of what's the most correct way of running microservice architecture, because that's not the purpose of this uh, talk. Oh, so, um, so quick setup and just demonstration of what I have here. So obviously I have a bit of configuration of ingress um, stuff. So I have Let's Encrypt. Uh, configuration here for uh, ingress um, controller for my Kubernetes cluster. And I have um, ingress route stable setup here that will route to different services, different Kubernetes services uh, based on the incoming URL. And then we just rewrite those URLs when, and then redirect them to a particular service. So that's one that's, I suppose, very simple. Um, the actual web uh, UI is AngularJS. I suppose it's a standard um, application. And this application, what it does, it's a store of cubes. Right? It's a cube store. And um, if we go and try to hit that URL, we're going to get nothing because I actually don't have any services back in that um, service at the moment deployed. So um, database that we're going to use for this demo I already deployed it because it takes a bit of it might take a bit of time to create replica sets, get certificates up and running. So I want, don't, didn't really want to for us to wait. Um, but just to kind of have an overview of what I have, I have a MongoDB database deployed with this name. It's a three replica sets version. I have full TLS configuration enabled, and my cluster authentication is using X509. So the replica um, members between Replica set members are using X509 configuration to talk to each other. And that's, I suppose, um, standard production deployment that we recommend to be fully secure. So every single communication is encrypted and authenticated. So if I look at my cloud manager, give me a second. Here's the project that I deployed this database into. So it has TLS auth enabled has three servers. And uh, just talk about security. Once we enable our cluster authentication X509, our agents also automatically switch to X509 users. An operator will automatically create those X509 certificates, request, um, sign your requests, and will distribute them accordingly. So operator does lots of heavy lifting for you to configure MongoDB with X509, uh, with TLS, and get all those users set up and configured. So here's my database. Uh, one thing as well, one nice feature about Ops Manager is we can actually look at the database. And uh, I've pre-filled it with some data about products that we want to sell. And the uh, Cloud Manager can actually see, we can inspect what's there, do queries, uh, which is quite handy if you want to have a look at what the data is and do debug or audit, let's say. So that's my setup for this demo. So what I'd like to do is that I'd like to I have two services, my product service and my filter service. I'd like to launch them, but also when they connect to MongoDB, use X509 user to make that connection, obviously over um, SSL, TLS. So uh, MongoDB drive, so uh, the product service is a simple Py Flask service that uses Mongo, MongoDB driver. And um, just to kind of highlight, we can use MongoDB CRV connection string, or we can actually list uh, all the replica sets within my database. Because we use replica sets in Kubernetes, the names are predictable. So we can actually specify the connection string ourselves if you would like to. Um, or we can, what I actually can do here is use an environment variable that I can pass to the container to provide this uh, connection string. And one thing as well is we use X509 mechanisms, SSL true. And um, we just need to provide a couple of SSL certificates, which is our PEM file, 
and our CA, so the trust chain for the certificate. So let's uh, go and do that. Um, so um, I have a script here, which is, I suppose, a handy script. Uh, it is available at, um, I took the script from Kubernetes uh, documentation. Uh, what it does, it uh, creates a certificate signing request uh, with the specific names. So in this case, what's important is the name of my client and the specific names defined in the signing request. And then we will do Kubernetes apply on this uh, certificate signing request uh, resource. And then once it's applied, we can approve the certificate, the same, very similar to what we've done before for MongoDB certificates. And then the script will just simply output those certificates into the folder. So to save time, I've already done it. So here I have my three, sorry, four certificate files. And in this case, I'm just interested in this full term file. So um, what's important here is for X509 is obviously, I have my cheat sheet here, um, is the name of the user, which is, which is the name in the certificate. So if I go and uh, look at the pen file. So it's important that that name uh, matches the name I would use in my connection string uh, as my user. And it is in a very specific format, uh, which, is def which is guided by the RFC 2253 subject line. So if that works, MongoDB will work really nicely with this um, um, X509 certificate. So the next thing I can do, I need to do is that um, I can use another MongoDB resource type uh, called um, sorry, what's that here? Uh, MongoDB user. So our operator as well comes with a second custom resource called MongoDB user. And this resource allows us to create X509 users within my MongoDB database. So I have with my resource, I have my um, name of it, username, and the project. So essentially where to create this user in which MongoDB project, because we're obviously going to use uh, Cloud Manager to do that. And then the roles I'd like to use it to have in my database. So what I can do simply is do uh, apply for Kubernetes, apply minus F. And that will command will, let, will instruct the operator that this resource exists, operator goes to Cloud Manager, and very quickly, we should be able to see if my demo is working. This user to be available in the Cloud Manager and Cloud Manager will push that user to this database. So as you can see here, our product service user has been applied. So if this user is now in database, so the only thing we need to do now is to launch our service with uh, X509 certificates placed in the correct places, right? So our driver can read that. So one thing we need to do now is if we look at our connection string, uh, we have two locations. One is a pen file and one is a CA file. Because we use Kubernetes CA to generate certificate, uh, we can actually use Kubernetes CA file. So this file is dropped by Kubernetes into every single port into this place automatically. So if we use Kubernetes CA to sign, uh, to generate our certificates, the CA file uh, will be in that place already, so we don't need to worry about this file at all. We just need to find our, get our PEM file. And the best way to do it is to create a secret. So um, I have my definition of a secret here in users. So what the secret does is um, essentially it creates a new secret, uh, opaque, and uh, here, just I'm just realized we're a bit short on time, is the base64 encryption of that PEM file. And I also would like to provide URI. We could provide URI to our service, so we don't have to hard code it inside our Python Flask app, this URI. So what I'll do, and I'll do, I'll create that secret. So once the secret is created, um, we can use that secret, those two data points within our application deployment to pass on, pass into the Python uh, Flask app. 
Um, and we can do it very, very simple. Um, and it's, I suppose it's a very standard practice uh, for Kubernetes um, applications to um, deploy it. Just give me a second. Too many files. Okay. So here's our uh, deployment definition for our Python application. So we obviously previously built that um, application. Um, so um, here's our container for this application that I've previously built. Uh, here's the MongoDB URI environment variable that I'd like to map from the secret uh, key URI. And the PEM file will be mounted to this point and we're going to take it uh, from the volume uh, that uh, we can create from that secret. So once we deploy this um, de definition, we, what we're going to expect is that the PEM file will be mounted in this folder and then we're going to get our application um, uh, we're able to get environment variable longer to be URI uh, with taken out from the key uh, URI from the secret. So by deploying this secret, uh, we, which we did. So the only thing to do is that we can apply this deployment now to our system. Over. And uh, we need to do the same for our second server service called Filters, uh, which is configured in the same uh, way. It's the same app, it just reads, provides, it returns different type of information. So once it's applied and uh, the, those ports are deployed, uh, we, we, we can keep CTL very good to see. So here's our product service, and that's here's our filter service, everything is healthy. So theoretically, uh, what should happen is that that website should come alive. Hey, it's working. Well, I'm surprised. So this website is a very simple website that sells cubes, right? So different color cubes. So we can look at dark cubes. Uh, we can look at cubes that contain red, so cubes can kind of contain red and blue. So it's just a very simple demonstration of uh, how can we wire up everything together. And uh, just as a quick overview, what we have here at the end is um, kind of an application that has MongoDB de deployed at the back end, uh, whether it's multiple databases per uh, service where we can use multiple deployments per service or even collection per service. Uh, but then all of communication is secured. We use X5 certificates to talk between MongoDB and application, MongoDB and it's all replica set members. So it's fully secure database. And as you can see, we use less encrypt for our front end database um, to encrypt um, that connection. So um, that's kind of the end of my um, demonstration.